Okay, this video is to explain how to assign multiple WAN IP addresses to PFSense. Here's the WAN address. Here is the WAN static IPv4. We set it static. I assigned it 172.16.69.50 with a gateway of 172.16.69.1. Pretty straightforward, and they make it kind of nice because they have the ag gateway here, but if you ever have to change the gateway in a static, you can also go in the system routing, and this is where your gateways show up, where you can set even multiple gateways for a system for some advanced use cases. So you see only the one IP address here, but we've actually got two assigned already. Now, where they show up is under firewall, and then virtual IPs. So what a virtual IP is, is it's another assignment to the WAN address. That means it's gonna use the same gateway as the WAN, so the same rule sets as the WAN as far as that goes, but it is a extra IP address that is accessible. And ideally these are usually on your external side, but obviously this can be used internally too if you want to assign multiple IPs internally and do other uh, advanced routing options. So how do you do this? Well, we're going to edit one first and we'll create another one. So here's this one. It's called 172.16.69.151 slash 24. It all has to be part of the same assignment given to you by the ISP. So we're pretending, because this is my lab, that the ISP gave us uh, two different IP addresses, 150, 151. And let's make up a third one, 152. So let's go ahead and create a new one. So we're going to hear virtual IPs, add, 152. Well, let's call this actually third IP address for the WAN. It's an IP alias. Change it to match the same CIDR notation as you were assigned. The WAN is uh, SAS24. This is obviously going to vary with whatever your ISP is assigned to you. So whatever ranges they gave to you, you set the first one as your WAN, make sure you have the gateway correct, and then set each subsequent one and make sure whatever the CIDR notation or subnetting that they handed you is, you follow along with that if you want it to work properly. And we're going to apply. Now we have two addresses assigned. So we've got this one here. But as you may note, when you go back to the dashboard, you only see the one IP address. So let's see actually how this plays out in the firewall and how you actually manipulate having multiple public IP addresses. Now this is actually the exact case we have here at my office. Uh, we have a block of IPs given to us and that allows us to run all the different services even if they are using the same port, uh, which won't work if you have only one IP. I can have port 80 open on one and port 80 open on another IP address. But let's talk about how that actually works. So here's the rule we created from my last demo on how to do NAT. Uh, port forwarding in PFSense. So we have our Linux box at 192.168.40.50. We have SSH open. We have the destination address as WAN. So we go here and we SSH to 172.16.69.150, which is our WAN IP address, as you can see at the top here. And we're into our 192.168.40.50 Linux box. So pretty straightforward there. Exit. All right, now here is the WAN address when we created the rule, but here's those other two IP address assignments, second IP there. So let's move it to 152, save, apply, and you can see 172, 1659, 152. Go over here to our SSH, and obviously 150 now fails, 152 works. So now we're into that box now. So let's go over here and take a look at another option on here. What if you wanted all the external IPs to listen to that? Well, you can actually do that too. You just go over here to WAN address, hit save, apply. And now, I'm sorry, I need it. I chose that wrong. For those of you watching and paying attention here, I need. I meant to choose WAN net. That means all the IPs assigned to the WAN net. Go here. 152 works. 151 works. And 150 works. So pretty straightforward here. 
for that to work. Not as likely you'll use that, but this way um, it might be fun if you're setting up a honeypot. You can make all the external IPs across that entire WAN net and all the virtual IP assignments go there. But generally speaking, you're going to want to do this and create these rules based on, you know, maybe you want this to run SSH and you want another server to run SSH. So if you have this server at on the 151 and in the 152 you want an SSH but you want to go to a different server that was uh, one of the use cases for this. We have more than one thing that runs over uh, web protocols so we can't reuse the same port um, over again for HTTPS. I mean we obviously could create a, a whole another set of proxies and things like that but for simplicity reasons if you have more than one IP address this makes a really easy way to do it. You assign some services to one IP address, other services to another IP address and that's really it. So it's just firewall virtual IPs and whatever the notation is based on your ISP. So that's not a lot to it. It's just not maybe where some people expect it because some people and then some firewalls do offer this. When you do it, everything's contained within the WAN where you would actually assign all the IP addresses here. But the only thing you need to put here is the first IP in that range of your WAN. And then each subsequent IP, your assigned static assignments given to you, you assign them here under virtual IPs. All right, thanks. Hopefully this is helpful. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and click the thumbs up. Leave us some feedback below to let us know any details, what you like and didn't like as well, because we love hearing the feedback. Or if you just want to say thanks, leave a comment. If you want to be notified of new videos as they come out, go ahead and hit the subscribe and the bell icon. That lets YouTube know that you're interested in notifications. Hopefully they send them, <laughs> as we've learned with YouTube. Anyways, if you want to contract us for consulting services, you go ahead and hit lawrencesystems.com and you can reach out to us for all the projects that we can do and help you. We work with a lot of uh, small businesses, IT companies, even some large companies, and you can farm different work out to us or just hire us as a consultant to help design your network. Also, if you want to help the channel in other ways, we have a Patreon. We have affiliate links. You'll find them in the description. You'll also find recommendations to other affiliate links and things you can sign up for on lawrencesystems.com. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.